Hey, I'm Sam from Barn2 with another video about how to optimize your WooCommerce store. You might have noticed that in WooCommerce, by default, you have no control over product order quantities or minimum order quantities in terms of dollar value. Customers can order as many or as few items as they like, which can lead to these three profit killing mistakes. But don't worry, I'll tell you how they can all be solved with just one plugin. So stick around for that solution. Mistake number one, losing potential profit from tiny or massive orders. Without quantity limits in WooCommerce, you have no control over order sizes. If they're too small, it can cost you money to fulfill those orders. And on the flip side, orders can be too large for your warehouse capacity to handle. Setting limits helps you to deliver a top-notch user experience and helps you maintain a great reputation with your customers. Mistake number two is not optimizing for packaging efficiency. Think about what products you sell. It may be advantageous or even necessary to set quantity increments that allow buyers to purchase products in multiples of two, three, four, etc. For example, you may have packaging boxes or pallets that fit six products nicely. In this case, selling sets of six makes the most sense for you and the customer because it helps you avoid shipping boxes or containers with a bunch of empty spaces in them. And mistake number three is not encouraging larger orders. By leaving the default order number as one, you're missing the opportunity to encourage larger orders from customers. And depending on your margins, having set minimums may be necessary just to keep you in the green. Using either a minimum or default quantity can gently nudge customers to buy more from your store. And you can also set a minimum order value to further protect your profit margins. So what's the solution? Well, to have the power to fix these mistakes, you need a quantity management plugin. And WooCommerce Quantity Manager from Barn2 ticks all the boxes. So today I'm gonna to show you how to set up WooCommerce Quantity Manager so you can then set quantity limits for your whole store or for a selection of categories and or products. We'll also learn how to modify the quantity picker to allow you to set a new default product quantity, set increment values for your products, set minimum or maximum quantities and order values, and as a bonus tip, we can also display the quantity picker on the shop page using a product table. This plugin is really easy to set up, doesn't take any technical knowledge, and you can have it entirely configured with just a few minutes of your time. So I'm gonna walk you through those steps now. The first step is of course to install and activate the plugin. Check the description for a link to the plugin, and after purchasing, you can download the zip file from the checkout confirmation page, your email receipt, or by logging into your account on barn2.com. Next, log into your WordPress site and navigate to plugins, add new. Then we'll click the upload plugin button, choose the zip file or drop it here. Click open and finally click install. And as soon as you install the plugin, it's gonna take you to the setup wizard. And now the first step in the setup wizard is to activate the plugin using your license key. You can always find your license key in the email confirmation that we sent you or on your account on barn2.com. Once you get this little green message indicating that your license key is active, you can click next. Step two in the setup wizard is to set the cart rules. Here's where we set the minimum and maximum order values based on quantity, dollar value, or both. So let's play around with this a little bit. I wanna set a minimum quantity of two items and a minimum order value of $20. And just for example, I can set a maximum quantity of say 50 items and a maximum order value of say $1,000. Cool. Step three is where we set quantity defaults and step values. Now remember these apply to your entire store, but they can always be overwritten by setting up specific rules for categories or products. Now the global default quantity allows you to choose a default quantity for all of your products. So if I set it as two, this would mean that every product has a default quantity of two, but this can be overridden by the customer in the store. Quantity step values determine how much the quantity will change when the customer increases or decreases the selection. Here you can enter a whole number to force customers to purchase in specific quantity increments. So if I put in two, then all my product quantities will move up or down in steps of two, like two, four, six, eight, and so on. 
if I set it to 6, it would go from 0 to 6 to 12, 18, and so on. Let's leave that at 2. Now, the step value calculation, we can choose whether to enforce the quantity step value individually for each product or variation, or share it so that customers can combine multiple products to meet the required step value. So do you want these rules to apply to a single product at a time, or can they be shared among multiple products? Okay, now the setup wizard is complete, we can move on to setting up individual categories and products. Let's go to the settings page. If at any time you need to find these settings, you need to go to WooCommerce, Settings, then click on the top here and find Products and Quantity Manager, and that'll bring you to this page here. Now we can see the settings that we created in the setup wizard. These are our store global defaults. Now, of course, you don't have to set defaults for your entire store. You can set it up category by category. But if you do set it up by the category or even by the product, which we'll get to in a minute, remember there's a hierarchy. So things that you set up for individual products will overwrite things that are set up for their category, which will also overwrite things that are set up for your entire store. This will give you as much fine-tuned control as you need. So let's see how to set up the minimums and maximums for each category. Let's go into the categories, products categories, and figure out how to change the rules for each one. Now you'll see here, if you wanna add a new category, everything is the same up the top, but down the bottom, you can set the quantity rules for the new category right here in the product category page where you can add a new category. If you want to edit an existing category, let's take for example, sunglasses, click edit, scroll down, and you'll see the quantity rules here. We can set the minimum quantity of two and the maximum say 10, and we can set the order value as a minimum as well. Uh, but in this case, I'm not too concerned about that because that will be very dependent on the price for the sunglasses. Now, because I've set my minimum quantity as two, I'll also set the default quantity to two. And the step values, I'm gonna leave that as one because I would like people to be able to choose between two and 10 sunglasses. We'll click update. And now let's visit our store to see how that looks. All right, let's scroll down to find the sunglasses and let's click on the product to go to the individual product page. And you can see the default quantity is two here. Now, if I try to go down and just add one to the basket, let's see what happens. I'll get this warning label, which says your cart must contain between two and 10 items of sunglasses before you can complete your order. So if I need to, I can then increase this and update the basket and boom, we have a green bar basket updated. So now the customer is able to purchase the sunglasses in the quantity of two up to 10. Next, we'll go over how to set limits for individual products, as well as individual limits for each variation of variable products. So let's go to all products and choose a new product to modify. I'm gonna go with this belt and edit this here. This is a simple product, so there are no extra variations to modify. So all I have to do is click on inventory here on the left, and I can manage the same quantity rules as before, but this will only apply to the single product, which is this belt. So for example, let's set the minimum as three, no maximum, and let's set the minimum value to $100, for example. Default quantity will be the default of the main store, or we can set that up as three. Let's set the step value to one, so we're not going to be affected by the default store minimums or maximums. And let's update the product up here. Now, when we view the product, we can see the default minimum is three, and we cannot go below that number because this is also the minimum. But we can go above to any number, and add to basket. Very good. Now let's find a variable product so I can show you how that looks. I'm just filtering my products by variable products. Okay, this one will do fine. This is from my restaurant video. And let's edit that. 
Now, if I come down to the variations, we can look at each individual variation. And here we can see the quantity rules with minimums, maximums uh, for both quantity and dollar values, as well as the default quantity and the step values as before. So we already know how those work, so I don't have to change anything. But of course, you'd have to change it for both variations. So make sure you change them for every variation and then come up here, of course, and click publish to save it. The last setting I want to go over for this plugin is how to set limits for different customer roles. Hey, okay, finally, let's go back to WooCommerce settings, products, quantity manager, and we're going to set up these rules for different customer roles. Now here you can see by default, all of the customer roles in my store have been chosen, but I'm going to disable this for quite a few of these levels. So let's see what that looks like. Now I'm going to set up these rules just for people who are either customers, pending a wholesale account, or the guests. But really you have the control over which user roles these rules are going to apply to. If you have them set to all the different roles, it'll apply to everyone. And if you set it to just a subset of those roles, it'll just apply to those customers. And of course, save changes here. And as a bonus tip for those of you who have stuck around this long in the video, I'm going to show you how to display the quantity picker on your main shopping page using the WooCommerce product table plugin. WooCommerce product table is another plugin from Barn2, which you will also have to purchase and download separately, or you can purchase them together in a bundle and save quite a bit of money, which I think is the best option. To display the quantity picker on the shop page, you will need the WooCommerce product table plugin also from Barn2. And once you've downloaded and activated that plugin, we can go to WooCommerce settings and go to products, product tables, make sure it's active, and we can use the table layout for the shop page. We'll save those changes and let's visit our store page now. Here we have the shop page with the product table active, and you can see the image, name, price, and a buy column with the default quantity set to two. So here we can see the quantity picker on the main shop page. But in the case of the belt, where I set it up separately to the rest of the store, you can see the default quantity is three. And for the rest of the store, the step value is also set to two. So starts at two and moves up by intervals of two. And then customers can add selected items to cart. And straight away, they have made a large order in just a few seconds. So this sort of setup is really good for wholesale stores. So now you finally have control over order quantities in WooCommerce, and you could set about fixing those mistakes from the beginning of the video and earning those extra profits you've been missing out on. If you want to learn how to set up the product table from the last step of the tutorial in this video, you can watch this video here. And of course, thanks for watching.